Today I'm unboxing the RTX 5090, a monster GPU from Nvidia. As a 3D artist, I want to see how it compares to my old, trusty 3090. And I'm Mike, your creative tech chap. Let's get this thing unboxed. I am super excited to get this card into my computer, see what it's capable of. Hopefully that's good enough to get in. Of course, it's gonna be a box inside a box. It is a box inside a box. It's got a pull tab. Lovely, that can go over there too. Let's see what's in here. Ta-da! <laughs> it does look funny. Looks like a giant dog biscuit. Oh, oh, it's got arrows on it. Yeah, that would have helped. Oh, it's hefty. Nice. That is one hefty boy. Yes, kudos for recycled cardboard, I suppose. Get started, there's a QR code to scan and cables. I've heard lots about this flexible boy. And of course, this is going to take four of these eight pins. I actually have a thousand watt power supply. And well, I was a little nervous about the 4090 because of all the ones that caught fire. But the old 3090 only took two of them. Bit of a difference on power draw there. And I think that's everything in that box. <laughs> and the cable. Well, I'll leave that on top of the box for the moment. Pull this apart. Come on, I wanna see the shiny. There we go. Ooh, it's big. How big? Let's have a look at this next to my old card. Well, it's definitely narrower, but it is wider, but it isn't much longer. That's nice. I mean, I have a big case anyway, and we've got the thickness there, significantly thinner which is good because I've got a capture card butted up right against one of the fans on this card. Nice. Now I didn't have much of a choice when I bought this one. The 3090, it's, it served me well. It's really, really quick. This one's gonna be quicker, I think. There wasn't very much choice um, during lockdown and that one was more expensive. In fact, it was about 20% more expensive than this. Wow, this has got some heft to it. I see you. And there's the power adapter just there. So we've got a big difference there between power adapter. It's gonna look cleaner in my case, but you know what? I don't really care about that because I put the side on my case and shut it back up again. Now these fans here, one of the things that I'm quite susceptible to is noise. So I'm hoping that these fans here are gonna do the job quietly. Obviously reviews are one thing, decibel numbers are another, but actual real world uses. I've got a, a switch over there with a tiny fan that occasionally makes a horrible high pitch whine and I hate it. It's not loud though, it's high pitched. And I definitely prefer the design of this beast. I can't wait to get it into the computer. I really do love the feel and design of this. It's much cleaner, much more utilitarian, something along those lines. Oh, it's heavy. I don't know how people have been holding it up. I just hold it up like that. So this is gonna benefit me by having eight gigs more of VRAM going from the GDD, GDDR6X on the 3090 all the way to GDDR7 on this card. So that's quite a bump in spec. Obviously this was already about half the speed of a 4090 and this is about 30% more. So I'm looking at about a two and a half speed uplift just in pure rendering performance. Uh, power draw. So at peak, this is really only about a 320 watt, maybe a little bit more card. This is capable of pulling a full 600 watt. So I will have a 600 watt space heater in the room with me. Now I'm looking forward to seeing how this also handles AV1 encoding. I was excited about it when Intel brought out their um, Ampere cards. Was it Ampere? I think so. Uh, when they brought out their A series cards. Arc. Not Ampere, what was Ampere? That was one of the generations of this, wasn't it? So when Intel brought that out AV1, I almost got a secondary card in my system just so I could have AV1 encoding. I can't wait to see the space savings it does with the videos that I make. So should anybody really upgrade when it comes to this? Well, if you can get your hands on one at a reasonable price, I think it's gonna be a massive uplift for anybody who's 30 series and backwards. And there's a lot of comparison with prices at the moment using the RRP. I was nowhere near the RRP when I bought this. There was no choice but to pay way over the odds. And that was from a retailer. Now you will find that a lot of the other, um, other cards from other manufacturers other than Nvidia, they are going to be charging a lot more. I've, I think I've seen one of the Asus cards up at nearly three grand. And that is a massive amount to pay for maybe 5% more performance. Now, 
I'm a very functional person. So I'm gonna put this into my case, slap the side on and start testing it, you know? I don't care for the RGB and all, all that sort of thing. Not at the moment. I think it does look awesome in some places, but practicality wins out in this case. That looks better there, doesn't it? <laughs> So who should really buy this? Well, if you are struggling at the moment with something like a 3090, or dare I say a 4090, I don't think anybody's gonna be struggling with either of those cars, to be honest. But if you're really pushing the limits of Blender, large scenes and need to load them into that 32 gigs of VRAM, that's gonna make a huge difference to your day. When it comes to AV1 encoding, I know there are other cards out there, but that's gonna really help me when it comes to producing videos for tutorials and things like that. As I said, there are some other models out there by all of the MSI, Palette, Asus, all those manufacturers. And MSI actually had one in the UK that was the same price as this. So I would say that was a good value. Once you start creeping up to paying 50% more, so going from the 2000 to 3000 range, you're not gonna get a lot of boost in performance. Ouch. Now I'll be testing this GPU in Blender and other creative applications, pitting it against my 3090. I've got a 3070 and a couple of 20 series cards as well. So you can see the real uplift from using this and the real world benefits, not just the Blender benchmark score. So subscribe for that. And speaking of the Blender benchmark score, if you want to know how this performs against all other cards, check out this video right here, and I'll see you in the next one.